Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. everybody this is the digital asset investor and at the end of this video I am going to inspire you because I just felt like it on this Sunday uh, I want to start this video off by showing you what you're looking at is the return rates on coin paprika we've had a pullback the last couple of days on um, which I believe personally I believe that the pullback that we've seen was a was was triggered by manipulation uh, possibly, I've, I've seen some articles about how BitMEX, BitMEX had a flash crash the day before things kind of crashed, uh, with specifically with XRP and specifically after their CEO spent the last two weeks talking bad about XRP and calling it a turd or whatever. But the BitMEX literally had a flash crash where it said XRP on that thing in a matter of like two seconds went from like 30 cents down to 18 cents or something crazy but anyway i just wanted to mention that for, i don't you know i'm not saying that i'm not saying that the bitmex um ceo had anything to do with that i'm just saying whatever it was sounds really fishy to me um okay but but as you can see for the last 30 days xrp's up 23 percent um for the quarter it's up 11 percent I think that we're just now starting to see things take off. And for those of you that haven't been around, these pullbacks, this is a natural part of, I mean, <laughs> nothing goes in a straight line forever, folks. And even if we have a great rush of price increases in XRP, it's not going to happen continuously. The world doesn't work that way. Okay, Sergeant Obi Obi-Wan, I want to give you a disclaimer here. I'm not a chart guy. Every once in a while, I'll see something about people who are chart guys or traders that they'll notice a pattern and I'll show it to you just for what it's worth. Okay. <clears throat> but this is Sergeant W1 XRP chart identical to 2017 before massive 1532% uh, rise rally, says uh, cryptocurrency analyst. Now, this is the article on this. I um, mean, it's talking about this guy. So they say he's called a technical trader known as known in the industry as magic. Actually, he's not known as magic. He is known as magic poop cannon, <laughs> which I laugh every time I see. But magic poop cannon. And look, I don't show anything from any traders or chart people unless they have a pretty significant following. And apparently a lot of people take them serious or think they know what they're doing. And so this guy's got over 30,000 followers. And so for that reason, I'm willing to show this. Um, he says, this could be the real deal, folks. XRP's chart looks identical to 2017 before the massive rally and, and resistance has been thoroughly destroyed. Nothing is guaranteed. Guaranteed stops are my best friend in times like this. Just so you know, I'm not a trader. Um, I, I don't recommend being a trader. I buy XRP and I hold it and I plan on holding it for a, a good while and I have held it for a good while. Uh, but I wanted to show you the end of this article too. Um, it says, in addition, the XRP ledger just logged its biggest single day of daily active addresses creation. According to crypto analytics firm Santiment, um, Ripple recently saw its largest single day of daily active addresses created in the token six plus year history according to our SAN data platform. So XRP addresses are spiking and that is a good thing for everyone. All right, um, let me get past this. Um, now, I want to, this is funny. I wanted y'all to see this. It, it, more than anything, it shows how fun this, uh, the CEO, for those of you that don't know, the CEO of Binance.us, Binance America, is Catherine Coley, who was previously with Ripple, okay? Well, she put this out yesterday. She said, when people ask how Binance America is different, low fees, lots of coins, discounts with BNB, and watch this. This is the CEO of Binance that you're watching here. I thought this was great. Let's do it. Hit that music, DJ Heath. Oh, oh, 
So anyway, it looks like the CEO of Binance is a lot of fun. I'm still waiting to open my Binance account, um, CEO of Binance. Um, it, you're still not letting me open an account in Georgia. I know you're working on it, and I'm waiting. For those of you that don't know, in the United States, there are three digital asset exchanges that I consider to be good platforms. Uh, Binance US, which I can't get to yet, Coinbase, and Uphold. Um, now, those are the three that I'm aware of that are legit and they're they're good platforms and so uh, I can't wait to be able to open a Binance.us account. Um, next I wanted to make you aware of this. Now folks before I tell you this I want to make sure you understand Sologenic is not paying me to say this. I'm I'm showing you this because it's interesting to me. They're building what they're building on the XRP ledger and so I just wanted to tell you about it tomorrow. Um, this is from the crypto utility guy and he's got a link in here that you can click to go get uh, your tolo solo tokens if, if it's legal in your country he says in two days sologenic ieo have you funded coinfield pro account coinfield join now and get 40 solo for free fund your account before ieo starts supply i wanted to make you aware uh he he's got a typo right here there are not going to be 40 million solo tokens there's going to be 400 million the price is going to come out at 25 cents. That could go up or that could go down. Available worldwide except US. It's also not available in Canada. I know that for a fact. Um, but I want to show you this. The 40, the supply of solo tokens um, is 400 million. And that number will decrease. Is my, they've got a burn mechanism in this. That number will decrease. Um, also, I wanted to show you this. Bob Ross, the CEO of Coinfield, the Coinfield is I guess he's also the CEO of Sologenic because the coin that's a Sologenic was started by Coinfield. Um, he says store solo and real Sologenic tokenized assets, stocks, and ETFs securely on your ledger and treasure. The video the video shows the final test by Toho Labs sending Solo from Ledger Nano and Trezor to Solo Wallet. Solo transactions are extremely fast thanks to the XRP ledger. Now watch this. I can get this going. How cool is that, folks? Pretty darn neat. And that's uh they're doing it with a treasure as well. I don't I'm not familiar with treasure, so I'm not gonna go there. All right. Um Green Eggs and Ham. If you don't follow this guy, he's a definite follow. Very smart guy. Um has a YouTube channel called To the Lifeboats. Give him a subscribe, give him a follow here on um Twitter. It's at it's at ham eggs and sam. They don't even see it coming. It's going to run over them like a freight train. They don't need facts. They've already swallowed the FUD hook, line, and sinker. This is a month-old conversation about Lightning Network, and apparently there's no other alt with real usage, and he's just laughing about this. And he's so right here. Look at this. These people are saying this. How can so many people defend the Lightning Network? It's been 18 months, twice over, and no one is using it. And then here it says, besides the Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's relatively no usage usage on any of the altcoins at all. Bitcoin blockchain is really the only blockchain in crypto where there, where there is any significant usage, usage whatsoever. Fees on Bitcoin are extremely low right now. Why would anyone use anything else? <laughs> it's hilarious because everything they're saying here, I'm, let me just make sure I didn't just lose my mic here. Every once in a while, these earphones just want to go. Uh, I use these, um, the earphones with uh, what you do. Okay, it says I'm connected, so I hope that we're good. Well, let's see. Let me go back in and make sure I'm paired. Hmm. Okay, so not sure what happened with my earphones there, but they went out for a second. So anyway. These guys are talking about how all these, these, um, only Bitcoin has any kind of a use, which is exactly the opposite is true from Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. Um, excerpt is from Stephen Bull from the DF. 
XRP volume is four times higher than Bitcoin on BTC markets. As you can see, look at the volume on XRP. This, my friends, is because XRP is being used. It's being used more than Bitcoin, <laughs> okay? And, and not only that, but it's faster and cheaper. And these people, I, it blows my mind how some of these Bitcoin people just because they they back themselves into a corner and they have they have kept their heads, even see the CEO of Bit Bitmex, they have kept their heads and continue to keep their heads buried in the sand. It's unbelievable. What will see bigger gains this year? This is a poll by a Bitcoin guy, the crypto lark. XRP wins this poll, 44.7% worthy of showing you. Perfect symmetry sent me this. Um, this is great. I saw this last night. Um, I was going out to eat and I saw this. I immediately went and got the book myself. Okay, check this out. Th this book can be gotten on Amazon. Someone is has written a book on Ripple and XRP. Discover the full potential of Ripple and XRP. And then it's got a it's got a list. It says what are the popular YouTubers for Ripple and XRP? Um, I'm, I'm listed, Alex Cobb's listed, a lot of these people you recognize are listed. There's a DM Logic to the Life folks, CKJ, Crypto Eddie, all these people you know, Bank XRP. I'll just list them all so I don't want anybody to get mad at me. Jungle Inc., To the Life folks, CKJ, Brad Combs, Dusty BC, Working Money Channel, Kevin Cage, Oz Crypto, Michael Sizcheck. All these people are in here. And it's got uh, Esoteric Trading Solutions, Teaching Crypto Markets. So should be... Uh, down here, they're talking about XRP chat, Reddit. Really cool idea for a book. Any, everybody should go and support this guy. I'm not getting paid to tell you that, but I tweeted this out. The history books are now being written. What will you tell your grandchildren you did during the greatest wealth transfer in the history of the world? And I'm showing you this book on Amazon. It's written by a guy named Arndt Podzis. Not sure who that is. All right. Um, XRP Bart sent me this. Um, there's a 70% chance that a recession will hit in the next six months, according to new research. All right, let's look at this. Um, I'm not going to go into that article, but I want to show you this. This is a series of different things about the economy, what a disaster it is. Fed Chair Jerome Powell just admitted the U.S. economy is screwed. Uh, he conceded Wednesday that monetary policy can never return to normal. In other words, they've backed themselves into a corner. They've got interest rates ridiculously low. They've been printing money out the wazoo. They're doing all these repo operations, and they know they're in a box. And this box ends one of two ways, collapse or some kind of successful roll into a new economy, which I believe is going to involve, involve digital assets and is going to create some major winners for those of us that have been here. Okay. Um, and then this from Peter Voss, the cat is out of the bag, folks. Bitcoin price soars as Jerome Powell confirms crypto's threat to the U.S. dollar. And then we get this. Now, I'm not going to show this video. It's too long. I've watched part of it already. I'm going to watch the whole thing today because Cryptopolis is so right here. We need Milton Friedman now. Powell is a tool. We are, are we close to a 1932 de depression all over again? I believe we're closer than people ever realized. And then this from Cryptopolis. He's retweeting this. Still, it is much more expensive for the U.S. to borrow than what Greece, a recently defaulted sovereign, has to pay on its own, on its new debt. Who, to top it, borrows in a foreign currency called the euro, operated by a hostile and unaccountable, unaccountable, supranational agency, the ECB. And then Cryptopolis took these uh, quotes here. Greece, Greece defaulted twice, U.S. zero times, yet their rate is lower than the U.S. The bubble in the bond market before stocks will wake up to this fact. All right, now I wanted to show you in conjunction with that a video from Chris Larson. This is Chris Larson, Money 2020. Um, from back, I think, in 2018. I went and pulled a series of videos. We've got a lot of new people that are coming into this space, and I found a few interesting videos that you've probably never seen. A lot of you have seen them, but they're always good to watch again. So this is the first. Listen to Chris Larson. Is 10 years out on the financial crisis, we still don't have the infrastructure, perhaps, to prevent the next one. And I think this is where digital assets can really help, because an efficient digital asset uh, can really solve um, some of the key problems in global liquidity. 
you know, the world's got trillions and trillions of dollars tied up in liquidity just to get around how clunky the movement of value is around the world. If with a really efficient digital asset, something like XR XRP, again, that's what we believe will be the, the, the most efficient, um, you can now reduce trillions and trillions of capital from being tied up. So you can make those transfers instantly as a bank or as a payment provider, as an enterprise, without having to have money pre-positioned all over the world. So that's... So there you go. There's the first one I wanted to show you. Let me get rid of this. The next one I wanted to show you, this is from Chris Larson back, I think this is in like 2014. Behind Ripple, you could trade my airline miles, which aren't extremely liquid, for uh, you know, dollars in Kenya. So the thing about what XRP, the role that it plays, this supporting role, um, you know, it doesn't, Ripple doesn't require you to ever use XRP, even in a trade. I mean, the cool thing here is that anybody in the world now using Ripple can put a bid ask on anything of value from any issuer. So, for example, somebody can decide, you know, I'm going to make a market between United Airlines miles, if, you know, once United Airlines miles are on Ripple, I hope they will be at someday, <laughs> um, to Brazilian Real. Um, you could go directly. You don't actually have to go through XRP. But what we believe will happen is that most market makers in filling out the world of exchanging value from anything of value, again, currencies, um, merchant reward points, airline miles, gold, silver, anything that you define as value, most people will actually, uh, most market makers will use XRP. Because as a currency without a counterparty, it is a completely unique thing in the protocol, just like Bitcoin is completely unique. Um, so again, our, our view of why math-based currencies are so valuable isn't necessarily that they replace existing currencies, it's just that they have a very unique feature in that they have no counterparty. So the whole world, the, the world only has to think about one thing when it comes to Bitcoin or Ripple, is the, the price in any, any microsecond in time. You never have to think about the counterparty risk. It turns out that that is a completely unique thing that's never existed before. So for, why is that important? Um, let's say you, you know, we use the example of of a farmer in Nepal wanting to buy farming equipment from a supplier in Kenya, let's say. Um, if you didn't have the math-based currency, even in an internet for value, you'd probably have to go Nepalese rupee to Indian rupee, Indian rupee to British pounds, British pounds to Kenyan XRP, the currency. So that's a, another great video from Chris Larson. I want to show you these things because it really lets you under, have a better understanding of this is the guy that hatched all this i mean well you know, this is the guy plus you know the guy that started stellar plus david schwartz but this is the the business mind behind all of this and i think it's important for many people out there to see hear some of this so that you have a good understanding and i'm sorry i've been making a couple of videos that are longer than normal because there's so many things i want to communicate to the newer people that are coming into this space there's so much that that is will dazzle you about what you're a part of work is it a similar a platform yeah so it's based on the same idea by the way this is 2015 i believe this is when um when it was ripple was still called open coin math based uh, currency simply means that the currency itself is defined by a mathematical relationship of servers in a distributed network uh, so instead of uh, it being controlled by a central authority, whether that be a company or, or a country, it's based simply on a math relationship. So the idea is that there can never be any more of the currency once uh, the, the amount has been set. So it can't be mm -hmm. uh, uh, debased, for example, and then people uh, can always depend on a predictable number. Ripple and Bitcoin, though, work in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we right. we've saw what Bitcoin had, has done over the last four years. We're really excited by it. Uh, we kept the good stuff, and we sort of fixed some of the flaws that we felt uh, could be iterated on, and that's uh, what OpenCoin uh, is trying to do. Now, how widespread is it going to be? I mean, what can I do? What can I actually do with Ripple uh, right, r right now? What can I transact in, and what is your global audience, your global reach like right now, or is it really uh, very, very nascent early uh, days to be talking in terms like that? Yeah, you know, it's the it, it's definitely the early days. There's a, there's a hundred billion ripples that have been created. About a billion of them have been now distributed uh, in the system. But I think what people uh, I think are now realizing with these math-based currencies is it isn't uh, maybe uh, the currency that is so uh, potentially revolutionary, but really the payment systems that naturally come with them. So the idea that you could make global payments in any currency to anyone, uh, which really should be great for e-commerce, uh, for example. 
They're uh, irreversible payments, so merchants love that. It's uh, analogous to cash. So what, what these uh, systems should really do is really help merchants, <laughs> small businesses, and people uh, lower the cost of, of doing commerce. And we think that's uh, the mo most exciting thing about this movement, and that's really what we focused on. So, for example, Ripple is multi-currency. Uh, you, uh, you can use it with map-based currencies, virtual currencies, regular currencies. There is a distributed right. currency exchange built right into it, and that's what we're excited about. How exactly does so there you go. And then, uh, I wanna, and by the way, I want to give a shout out to Stephen Bull from the Diet, another guy. If you don't follow this guy, you need to. He does. A, he puts a lot of great video snippets out on the internet about Ripple. Now, this guy, this is what you need to see as well. This is um, the, the gentleman in the middle, third from the left, is Ross B. Leckler, Deputy General Counsel, Legal Department of the International Monetary Fund. Please kindly listen to what he says about Chris Larson, the founder of Ripple. Please also share us some thoughts you have. But anyway, listen to this, 50 seconds. This is how big what I want you to understand you're a part of. Ripple is not just another startup. These guys are in the room and, and they're in, in they're in the club with these guys like the IMF. This is not just some jackleg startup. It's not what this is. Right now, the IMF is doing a lot of work in this space, and it consists of several different initiatives. First of all, we have a very active program of research and publication. Uh, we've published major studies on what were then called virtual currencies, aka crypto assets, and on the potential impact of fintech on the cross-border payments market. We are engaging very closely with the private sector and the industry, and last year put in place a high-level advisory group of industry leaders from the private and public sectors to help guide us in our work on fintech. I'm very happy to say that Chris Larson, one of the co-founders of Ripple, and Sapnendo Mohante from the Monetary Authority of Singapore are both part of that group, and we're very grateful for the, work, the advice that they give us. So right now... So there you go. Okay, and now... Finally, I want, to sh I want you to listen to this. this. These are the words of Ashish Birla. Listen closely. Well, how do you get the timing right of all these things? Because we can be too early. Uh, we can be too late, for sure. And neither of those is, uh, is ideal. So how do you know when the right time is to pursue something? Uh, this is a, this is a brilliant <laughs> question. And, uh, and, you know, looking back at it, I will say that Ripple was too early. Um, and it ended up working out for us because uh, I think we had a very, we had very good leadership, a very good founder that you know said something to me really early on when we, you know when I joined Ripple, was that hey like uh, you know Chris Larson's his name and you know what he said was that um, I don't know when this is going to happen, um, but the Internet of Value um, uh, solved by blockchain is going to happen. Uh, what we have to do is is make sure that we're around in the right position for when this thing takes off. And you know, in in 2013, like I mentioned early on, um, you know, we the, the, there was the, the volume across all exchanges was so small. Um, it was really hard to use this technology for anything meaningful. Yeah. But we started building the infrastructure. We started investing in exchanges around the world you know, putting those partnerships together. And guess what? When, when the thing took off, we were there. We were ready. We were front and center. And, uh, and so, the, you know, the point would be is I would way rather be uh, too early. And, again, you, would, yeah. you can look at Amazon saying they were probably too early given that e-commerce sales in, in, in 1997 was probably less than a percentage point. Um, but they stuck it out, and they, got, they were in the right position um, and they ended up being, you know, they're probably going to be the largest company in the world at some point. Um, <laughs> but again, like I think you see that most large sustainable companies in the tech space are too early. Okay, now that speaks for itself as well. Now, I want to finish this video, and I'm sorry this video is a little longer than usual, but part of what I've always wanted to do on my channel is inspire. And I want to tell you something that I have learned. Um, you know, I'm a 46-year-old man, and I've learned by being in social media for the last couple of years. One thing I've learned is very depressing to me. What I have learned is that our culture has, has moved in a direction where 
everybody gets a trophy and, and there is no accountability. Nobody sees themselves as what they should be, which is responsible for their own lives. If you're going to make it happen or not going to make it happen, it's on you. It's not on me. It's not on someone else. Don't you don't let your life become an excuse. OK, and I, I that, that is it, it makes me sick. I've taught my sons from the, the time they were very young that whatever happens or does not happen, it's your responsibility. It is not someone else's responsibility. Your life is yours. There, and no matter who you are or what you accomplish or don't accomplish, if it's if you accomplish anything big, you're going to have a lot of big obstacles in front of you. And it's your job to get up every morning and go do, fight the good fight and to go around, go through or go over those obstacles. Don't don't let yourself be one of those people who, who makes their entire life an excuse and is always looking for someone to point to and blame for what you become. Because I could give you, and I don't care where you're from, I don't care what what race you are, what culture you're from, I can give you an example of someone from where you're from who got up and did not sit around and make excuses and got up and did their thing and said, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. And so I'm going to finish this video by showing you a video that I think you all should see, especially you young people out there. Here it is. So I was going to... Uh, show you this video to inspire you. It's called No Excuses. And when I did uh, show the video and I uploaded it, YouTube tried to give me a copyright strike. So I'm going to direct you to it. This guy is Ben Lionel Scott. You can go and watch this. The video is called No Excuses. Best motivational video. Um, but I am going to finish with this. <clears throat> George Bernard Shaw. People are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want. And if they can't find them, make them. I'm the digital asset investor. I always make things the way I want them to be because I don't give up. I don't make excuses for myself. And none of you out there should make excuses for yourselves. We live in this culture where now where where like I said where everybody uh, thinks they deserve a trophy. The truth the truth is you don't deserve a trophy unless you earn it. Earning that trophy is what what will give you self worth. Someone handing you a trophy that you don't deserve is worth nothing, and it will do nothing for your psyche. Earning the trophy, working your butt off, working harder than the other guys when the other guy studies for an hour, you study for two. That's what will give you satisfaction in your life. Don't point at other people and make excuses for why you are where you are. You're where you are. You, you're exactly where you are because that's where you deserve to be unless you've created this goal in your mind that, 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 that you will not stop pursuing. The second, in my opinion, the second that you create that goal and make up your mind that you're not going to make excuses for your life anymore and that you're going to work towards that goal, to me, you're a success from that minute. I'm the digital asset investor again. This, I'm, I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to get to work and stop making excuses. Thank you for listening.